I've been daily driving the Framework laptop for just over a year now, and I bought the Framework, the very first product from a startup company, because unlike their established mainstream competition, Framework's business model was completely different than most companies. Rather than producing a laptop with soldered and glued down components with a finite lifespan designed to be replaced in a few years, the Framework laptop was designed to be completely modular, user repairable and upgradable. As technology advances and new generations of computer hardware is developed, Framework promised to provide upgraded components for the laptop. And they've made good on that promise. Just over a year from when Framework launched and I purchased my 11th gen Intel Tiger Lake laptop, they've released a 12th gen Alder Lake mainboard and I bought one along with an upgraded, more rigid top cover. However, while other media outlets have proclaimed how awesome and innovative this is, which I fully agree, the question I want to answer today is, was the $840 I spent today worth it to upgrade a computer I just spent $1,200 on a year ago? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and while most reviewers have focused on the ease of swapping the 11th gen for the 12th gen framework mainboard, that's not what we're doing today. I got my upgraded mainboard about a week ago, and I swapped it in immediately, and it was simple. Of course, I've disassembled and reassembled this laptop dozens of times over the past year, but for anyone needing a guide, on top of the step-by-step -step guide framework provides, iFixit did a very good video guide on the process. What I'm going to do today is share all the performance metrics I've collected over the past week to show the difference in performance between the i7-1165G7 framework and the upgraded i7-1260P. I also replaced the old stamped aluminum top cover with Framework's new, more rigid machined aluminum cover. If we look at the old cover, it definitely lacks some structural integrity. Just one figure could depress the cover significantly, so setting something not entirely too heavy on top of the laptop could potentially lead to screen damage, and there was also quite a bit of flex. But my biggest complaint, which I highlighted in my six month review, was the excessive screen wiggle. Now, with the screen replaced, it's definitely more structurally sound. There's almost no downward or side to side flex. And my cover don't jiggle jiggle, it just folds. Wait, wait. It actually still wiggle wiggles. Now, this is probably because I still have the original 3.3 kilogram hinges installed because while Framework did announce more rigid 4 kilogram hinges, at the time of filming, they're still not available to the general consumer. The new panel also adds about 25 grams to the laptop's weight. Let's talk about the main boards. My original 11th gen main board is the i7-1165G7. It's a four core, eight thread CPU with a max turbo frequency of 4.7 gigahertz and a base frequency of 2.8 gigahertz at its 28 watt TDP up or 1.2 gigahertz at its 12 watt TDP down. It also has integrated Iris XE graphics with 96 execution units operating at 1.3 gigahertz and the board can support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. The 12th gen main board is the i7-1260P version, which has four performance cores and eight efficiency cores for a total of 16 threads. The P cores have a max turbo frequency of 4.7 gigahertz, while the E cores max out at 3.4 gigahertz. The 12th gen CPU also has a configurable TDP of 28 watts up and 20 watts down and has integrated XE graphics with 96 EUs operating at 1.4 gigahertz. Those are the paper specs of the CPU. Let's jump into the performance benchmarks. Also, I should note that I'm using an up-to-date version of Windows 11 for all this testing, and I'll start with synthetic benchmarks with the disclaimer that the workloads that these put on this laptop are not the workloads intended for an ultra portable. I also ran the test in all three of the default Windows power modes and in Cinebench R23, immediately we see a 100% performance increase with the 12th gen at highest power level and 150% better at the lowest power draw. 
We also see the 12th gen only drops about 5% from best performance to best efficiency, while the 11th gen drops by over 23%. However, this is because the 11th gen actually reduces power draw by over 40%, while the 12th gen only cuts power by a little less than 25%. Looking at the single core Cinebench cores, we see that Intel has improved its single core performance by about 30% at the top power setting. However, due to its reliance on the less performant E cores at the efficiency setting, the 11th gen has an 18.6% advantage. You also notice that like the multi-core test, the 11th gen actually performs better at the balanced power setting, and this is due to the average clock frequency over the course of the test. At max performance, the CPU boosts to its max frequency based on thermal headroom, and once it hits its 100 Celsius ceiling, it drops to its base frequency. While at balanced, it skirts the middle ground at about 3.7 to 3.9 gigahertz. Geekbench 5 multi-core score shows an 85% increase with the 12th gen at best performance, but slips to 50% at lowest power setting. And again, in single core performance, the 12th gen has a 15% advantage at full power while virtually tied at balanced and the 11th gen pulls ahead by almost 13% at best efficiency. Looking at the average cycles per second of three blender renders, the 12th gen gets from a 91 to a 122% increase. And finally, for raw CPU performance, I ran the 7-zip benchmark, and the Alder Lake CPU sees a 58% uplift in compression speed, while again, we see the 11th gen significantly reduce power at best efficiency, while the 12th gen, not so much. In decompression, we see similar results, with a larger 78% gain for the Alder Lake system. Now let's move from heavy multi-threaded tasks that this ultra portable really wasn't designed for to more practical tasks that this laptop can do just not very well video editing and in our procyon adobe premiere pro test the 12th gen has about a 19 percent advantage over the 11th gen looking at that practically the 12th gen was able to export the four video projects over 22 minutes faster Looking at the Puget Bench Premiere Pro benchmark, and the 12th gen has a 23% lead here. However, as a sanity check, a much cheaper 2020 M1 MacBook Air scores about 100 points higher than the 12th gen in this test. Moving on to a real world project in DaVinci Resolve and rendering out the last video I uploaded, a 10 minute 4K H265 project using the YouTube 2160p preset, took 55 minutes and 29 seconds for the 11th gen while it just immediately failed on the 12th gen. I'm not entirely sure why all the settings were exactly the same, but I will say that I've noticed a lot of problems with Intel QuinkSync and Blackmagic raw footage in the past. And even though the 11th gen was able to export the video, albeit extraordinarily slowly, the final video was flickering and unusable. Now, that doesn't mean the framework is not good for any content creation. As a matter of fact, it's great for photo editing and looking at the Procyon Photoshop and Lightroom test, the 12th gen scores 23% higher at full power and about 12% better at low power. But here, looking at some of the individual tasks tested, we see the actual difference between the two CPUs comes down to seconds or fractions of seconds. Looking at the Photoshop Puget benchmark results, we see the 12th gen takes a 28% lead. Now let's look at what this laptop is really made for, productivity work, and starting with PC Mark 10, which tests several productivity tasks like video conferencing, web browsing, office work, as well as some photo and video editing and some light 3D rendering, the 12th gen has a 10% advantage pretty consistently across all power settings. With the Procyon Productivity Benchmark, which tests various tasks in Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook, the 12th gen starts at 19% better performance and drops to just 6% at best efficiency. And looking at the results from both the tests at the best efficiency settings, we see that the 12th gen is only completing most tasks by mere fractions of seconds. In fact, if I open a large spreadsheet and sort the over 4.6 million cells, the 12th gen can do it about four seconds faster at best performance, but it drops to just two seconds faster at balanced. However, it falls behind by almost 10 seconds at best efficiency. It's like the efficiency cores aren't good at math, which is weird because 
that's their one job. Anyway, the next thing I tested was some code compilation and I meant to do more of this, but just ran out of time. I may do a full video on different Linux distros performance on the 11th versus 12th gen framework where I can add more coding tests. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comments and of course, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. But the one test I did was a Firefox nightly build and the 12th gen was able to build the browser 6.28 seconds or about 14% faster. Moving on to some integrated graphics benchmarks and the Geekbench OpenCL test shows the extra 100 megahertz GPU clock frequency and the extra six megabytes of cache gives the 12th gen about a 7% boost over the 11th gen. Also to test graphics, I ran the 3 d Mark Night Raid test and I got some interesting results. Here we see on the orange lines that as we reduce power, the Alder Lake's iGPU actually performs better while the CPU performance, the gray lines, follows the behavior of the Tiger Lake with the balanced run being the highest, whereas the 11th gen significantly dropped GPU performance as you reduced power. In the end, the 12th gen scored about 43% higher in the test. Now yes, Night Raid is a gaming benchmark and while you can get in a few rounds of Candy Crush or work on your replica of Hogwarts and Minecraft between conference calls, this is not a gaming laptop, no matter which generation of CPU you're using. To demonstrate, I ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark at 720p low graphics presets, and even though the 1260p beat the 1165 by a single frame, both the scores were only in the 30s. Not exactly highly playable. However, in the interest of satisfying you, the audience, I did connect the framework to my Razer eGPU in which I installed an RTX 3050 and I ran a few benchmarks. I'm not going to take a bunch of time here, I'll just note that the titles that are more CPU intensive like Cyberpunk and CSGO definitely favor the Alder Lake while the more GPU bound titles are really close. However, one thing the CPU bound titles suffer from with both processors is significant stuttering as demonstrated in the 1% lows. So that takes care of the performance, now let's look at the power efficiency and battery life, and most importantly when it comes to battery life, the 12th gen mainboard doesn't get you any more. In fact, the Procyon light load video playback battery test, the 11th gen lasted 25 minutes longer, and in the idle test, the Tiger Lake version lasted almost a full hour longer than the Alder Lake. Additionally, charging the laptop to 100%, pulling the charger, putting it to sleep, 12 hours later, both versions had lost 4.5% battery charge, so no change in standby power draw, at least for Windows 11. And when it comes to power efficiency, I think that's the most important stat, battery life. I was going to throw up more charts to compare power consumption during different tasks, but this video is already getting pretty long, plus it's not a new discovery. Alder Lake power efficiency problems have been well covered across tech media. Yes, the 12th gen CPU is more efficient on a core to core level, but the E cores aren't really all that efficient. So having those additional eight cores eats up more power than it really should. Now, the one significant problem with this when it comes to the framework is that while the laptop's cooling solution can handle the 16 thread CPU, to do so, the fans need to spin fast and often. Not a big problem on balanced or efficiency mode, but when plugged in on best performance, just at idle, the CPU temps hover around 50 degrees. And if you do anything, open an app, send an email, even if just a background app fires up and causes the CPU to raise to just 10 to 15% usage, the CPU temp jumps into the 80s and the fans ramp up and this little laptop gets loud. So after all that, let's answer the question. Was this over $800 upgrade worth it? As far as the $89 cover, uh, to be determined. I definitely like the added structural rigidity, but the jury's out until I can determine if the upgraded hinges fix the wiggle. As far as the $700 motherboard upgrade, I encourage you to look at the performance data I just presented and make up your own mind, but for me, it's absolutely not worth the money not for a relatively minor upgrade in productivity performance with worse battery life. Now, obviously Framework had to release this motherboard. Had they released a 12th gen laptop and not offered their initial customers the upgrade option, it would have been bad. 
I'm pretty sure selling standalone 12th gen made boards was more for PR than for providing a reasonable upgrade path to customers. And I don't think people who just spent a thousand dollars or more on a brand new laptop a year or less ago are going to spend the money on a new main board. Other than the ultra enthusiasts like me, of course, got to have the newest tech. Now, if it was something like a Ryzen 6800U main board, then it probably still wouldn't be cost effective, but people would buy it. I mean, just for the extra hours of battery life, I'd imagine. So that leaves the question, what am I going to do with the 12th gen main board now? It's hotter, louder, and less efficient, so I really want to keep it in my daily driver laptop. I already have my i5 1135G7 main board in the CJ64, my custom machine keyboard PC. Well, stay tuned because I'm designing a whole new enclosure that'll incorporate my small form factor RTX 3050 and maybe a beefed up cooling solution for the 1260p. That's to come, so be sure to subscribe and be sure to check out my full framework playlist linked in the description below. While you're there, be sure to hit that like and hope to catch you in the next one.